Hey everyone and welcome to my channel, The Reader Teacher. My name's Scott. In these coming soon videos, I'll be sharing my most anticipated children's books releases for each month. This video previews the upcoming children's books for the month of June. You can find my previous month's coming soon videos here. I'll be going through them in release date order and where they have the same release date, then they'll be alphabetically by title. If you just want to hear about a specific book, then use the timestamps in the description below. I hope this video helps you to discover more children's books to add to your TBRs and I'll be doing more monthly videos like this one throughout the year. So make sure to leave me a like, hit that subscribe button and the bell to be notified every time I release a new video. Let me know in the comments below which of the books you like the look of and all the links to all the books that I mention in this video will also be in the description box below. We have so many to get through, so let's take a look at the books. First up is Nen and the Lonely Fisherman by Ian Eagleton and James Mayhew, out on the 1st of June, which is a gorgeous picture book fairy tale, a modern adaptation of the classic Little Mermaid tale, but with an LGBTQ plus twist. It tells the story of a merman who is drawn to the human world and leaves his underwater kingdom, swimming closer to the shore in search for true love. Here, he sings a song of hope across the sea, which is heard by a lonely, caring young fisherman named Ernest, who hopes to find warmth in his heart. As the two meet, they feel a special connection, much to the dismay of Nen's father Pelagios, who creates a wild sea storm to protect his son and the ocean. Can Nen save Ernest by fighting for him, now that he's found him? What I like most about this book is how it combines the power of love through its celebration of a relationship between two men, with messages of inclusivity, acceptance, hope and the need to protect our oceans. Big thanks to Owlet Press for sending me a gorgeous finished copy and make sure to keep a lookout for more beautiful and diverse books from this publisher as their books are absolutely amazing. Next we have Antigua de Fortune of the High Seas by Anna Rainbow and Ollie Hyatt out on the 3rd of June. This one follows Antigua, or Tiggy for short, who has always had the ocean in her blood. Forced to wear dresses, attend balls and worst of all comb her wild and ruly curly hair, she longs for high stakes adventure in her life. So when the Pirate King strikes the island where she lives, wielding deadly magic and stealing her younger brother, along with every boy on the island, Tiggy knows now is the time to claim her destiny. Take to the seas and rescue the boys. This book gives me major The Ship of Shadows by Maria Kuzniar feels. So if you're a big fan of that swashbuckling story with a kick-ass crew of pirate characters, I definitely think you should be all over this one with its cast of natural and supernatural characters, a giant squid, courageous mermaids and fighting fish. This is one unforgettable voyage you'll want to be on board for. So thank you Chicken House for the finished copy. I can't wait to set sail on this one. Also out on the 3rd of June is Children of the Quicksands by Efwa Traore, winner of the 2019 The Times Chicken House Children's Fiction Competition. When Simi's mum has to leave her home in Lagos and travel to London for a month to train for her new job, she sends Simi off to stay with her long lost grandmother in a remote Nigerian village, rather than to her dad and his new girlfriend. Arriving, Simi's initially hesitant to see how she'll get on with her grandmother, seeing as she can't remember the last time that her mother spoke to her grandmother. Plus, there's no TV, internet or phone in her house, and only the sound of the surrounding birds and animals can be heard at night, leaving Simi struggling to adjust from the city back home to this new culture that's completely in contrast. Learning that her witch-like grandmother helps dispense advice and herbal medicine to the villagers, Simi always finds that she is strangely quiet when it comes to discussing their family history. Something must have happened, but what? Determined to find out, Simi disobeys her grandmother and goes off on an extraordinary journey to explore why. Covering themes such as divorce, grief, African folklore with Yoruba myths, legends and magical superstitions, this story is not only a love letter to the lush landscape that Efwa once called home, but one that has deep-rooted and rich connections to the author's childhood that she hopes means more children like her own will see themselves represented within stories like these. Again, thanks Chicken House for the finished coffee. Another one for the 3rd of June is Danny Chung Does Not Do Maths by Maisie Chan and Ahn Gao. In this one we meet Danny Chung who loves to draw. It makes him feel good, he does it anywhere and everywhere, especially stealthily under the desk at school and in his own room in bed by torchlight, 
because there's nothing else more that he likes to do, especially not maths, like his dad says he's supposed to be good at. But when his life is turned upside down when his ex-maths champion grandmother from China arrives, meaning she has to not only share his room, but also takes his top bunk, Danny is in no mood to look after her, even though she can't speak a word of English. However, it's not long until Danny realises that there may be more to Nai Nai than meets the eye, and that both of them actually have far more in common than he first thought. This book looks like it's going to be such a funny read, so I'm super excited to see what's in store with Danny as he gets closer to his grandmother. Thank you, Piccadilly Press, for the finished copy. If you've already read A Mummy Ate My Homework, then you'll be really pleased to see another book in this highly illustrated historical fiction graphic novel style series with The Gladiator Stole My Lunchbox by Tiago de Moraes, out on the 3rd of June. After his Egyptian exploits in the last book, Henry thinks he's done with time travel, but he's also fed up with his little sister and wants a break. So when he's sent back in time to live with a family in ancient Rome, he finds that his relationship with his sister wasn't as bad as this kind of sibling rivalry is with his new Roman family and their relationships of backstabbing and revenge plots are plenty. Stuck here, he needs to find a way of surviving, as well as saving the emperor and restoring harmony to his new household. Mixing non-fiction facts and fun together in this genre that I like to call faction, these books, which can be read as standalone adventures, should be on every bookshelf. So thank you, Scholastic, for this golden finished copy. Hurricane Child by Case and Calendar, out on the 3rd of June, is the winner of the Stonewall Book Award and the Lambda Literary Award. In this stunning story, we are introduced to Caroline, who is a hurricane child, an unlucky person born during a hurricane. They say that bad luck comes in threes, and with Caroline, this is no different, as she's hated and bullied by everyone in her school, sees only a spirit-like person who won't stop stalking her, and one day, her mother left home only to never return. Feeling like her luck will never change, Caroline meets a new student at her school called Kalinda, who has a special smile for everyone and becomes Caroline's first and only friend, which later develops into Caroline's crush. Realising her feelings for Kalinda is a big thing for Caroline and telling her will be even bigger still, but with this on her mind she is determined to find out the reasons for her mother's disappearance. And with Kalinda's help, can she do this before she loses her mum forever? I read King and the Dragonflies by Kaysen last year and it took my breath away. So I'm so happy to see Hurricane Child being published in the UK. Big thanks Scholastic for sending me a finished copy. In Maria's Island by Victoria Hislop and Jill Smith, out on the 3rd of June, Victoria returns to the world of her best-selling adult book, The Island, to tell the story of Maria Petrakis, one of the children in the original version of the novel after being told that the themes of the island were as relevant to children as they are to adults, but that the original version was too grown up for children to read. Maria lives in the Cretan seaside village of Placa, which is a place shrouded in shame and fear as it's across the water from the leper colony of Spina Lonia. Knowing little about leprosy, she doesn't know what it can do until it affects her life in a terrible way, when her mother and best friend are sent across the water to isolate on the island after contracting the disease. But life for Maria is about to worsen when she's diagnosed with the disease a few years later and must face the prospect of leaving everything she knows behind. However, since time has passed, there have been significant advancements in medicine. So does this mean there is still hope for Maria? Big thanks, Walker, for the glorious hardback copy. This looks like such a stunning story that's going to be told with great sensitivity. Meet Matilda Musk in Meet Matilda Rocket Builder by Dom Conlon and Heidi Cannon, a scientific story that's told through the journal pages of this budding astronaut-to-be. With aspirations to follow in the footsteps of Armstrong and the Apollo astronauts before her, Matilda is a fun-loving, joyful, passionately curious and ambitious, some would say slightly overambitious, but not Matilda, girl who loves life and everything extraterrestrial. Filled full of easy-to-understand facts about all things astronomical, from how to pee in zero-g, to air pressure, escape velocities, coding and rocket building, this book bursts with so much blast-off energy that it'll have readers, young and old, wanting to join her on her journey to space. Huge thanks to you, Clan, for the finished copy. Next, out on the 3rd of June, is The Secret Detectives by Ella Risbridger, 
where we step aboard the SS Mariana for this historical murder mystery and a prequel to The Secret Garden, set somewhere between India and England. When Isabel Petty is orphaned, she finds herself being taken away from her home in India and sent to live with her distant uncle in England. It is here, on board the ship, she sees a shocking act, somebody being thrown overboard in the middle of the night. However, when the ship's captain insists that no one is missing, Isabel and her new friends must solve not one, but two mysteries before the ship reaches England and the culprit has the chance to escape. Who is the murderer and who is the victim? This sounds like it's going to be definitely one to recommend to readers who love Robin Stevens's Murder Most Unladylike series and Catherine Woodfine's Sinclair Mystery series for its super sleuthing. Thanks Nosy Crow for the finished copy. I'm a huge fan of Lisa Thompson's books, especially The Goldfish Boy and Owen and the Soldier, which was shortlisted for the Blue Peter Book Award 2020, so I'm delighted to see another one on the way from her in The Small Things out on the 3rd of June. This one follows Anna, who is feeling anxious when she's chosen to buddy up and be friends with the new girl in her class. However, the new girl can't come to school herself because of her illness, and so she has to communicate with Anna using a new kind of robot. As Anna gets to know her, her anxiety increases as she's worried her life is too boring to be of interest to Ellie as she doesn't really have anything exciting to talk about. So when Ellie asks about her life outside school, Anna begins to tell little white lies, where one becomes two and two becomes three and so on. But what will happen when Ellie finds out the truth about Anna? I'm excited to read more of this story as it takes an interesting and different look at school friendships and shows how we should all appreciate the little things in life. I just know that this will be told with the same trademark empathy and heart that we find in all of Lisa's books. And after finding out that novellas are Lisa's favourite type of stories to write, I know I'm going to love it. Big thanks, Barrington Stoke, for the finished copy. Also out on the 3rd of June is The Three Impossibles by Susie Bauer, her second children's novel after School for Nobodies last year, which from its cover and tagline, If You're Brave Enough, Nothing Is Impossible, makes me really want to read this one. In this one, we meet Mim, who has grown up surrounded by secrets and curses that have been cast upon her family. Ever since, she's been holed up, living in a walled castle, forbidden from venturing to the outside. But Mim has never been content with living like this, and she's forever been questioning her existence inside this fortress, with her curiosity growing stronger each day, especially the day her dad enlists a madame to train her in the art of being a princess. Searching for a sense of freedom, Mim feels like these mysteries need solving, and she's prepared to break all the rules in her pursuit of the truth. But will she find what she's looking for? Thanks Pushkin Press for this beautiful finished copy which I can't wait to read to see what happens to Mim. Now I've long since been a fan of M.G. Leonard and her wonderful writing, whether it be about Beatles in the brilliant Beetle Boy trilogy or Trains in the Adventures on Trains series with Sam Sedgman. So to see a new book, the first in a brand new series on the horizon from her, called Twitch, out on the 3rd of June, all about birds makes me super excited especially one with a kingfisher on the cover, which is my absolute favourite bird. In this one, we meet Twitch, who prefers the company of birds, particularly his three pet chickens, the swallows nesting in his bedroom, and the four pet pigeons he's training to carry messages. So when he arrives at his top secret birdwatching hide on the first day of the summer holidays, he's shocked to see the police everywhere swarming around it in search of a convicted robber who has escaped from the local prison and is hiding right here. Finding himself smack bang in the middle of this mystery, can he use his birdwatching skills to help to crack the case? This detective adventure will not only strike a chord with readers who are nature lovers with its admiration for our avian friends, but is also one that explores important messages such as the protection of nature and wildlife and also bullying at the beginning of the book. So thanks Walker Books for this beautiful finished copy. When the Sky Falls by Phil Earle has been on my reading radar for a long time since I saw its stunning cover that hooked me completely. Out on the 3rd of June, this one takes us back in time to 1941, where war is raging and one very angry boy, whose emotions you can feel bubbling to the surface through its pages, has been sent to the city where the bombs light up the skies. Instead of being evacuated to the country, Joseph lives with Mrs F, who has no liking for children at all. Her only love is the dilapidated zoo she owns and its mighty silverback gorilla, Adonis. However, as the bombs keep dropping, the threat of impending danger looms ever closer for the zoo, and what will happen to Adonis if the bombers set him free? 
From what I've read so far, I have a really strong feeling that this breathtaking story set against the backdrop of the Blitz and inspired by real events in World War II is going to be right up there as one of the best children's books I'll read this year. Massive thanks Anderson Press for the finished copy. Out on the 10th of June is The Astonishing Future of Alex Nobody by Kate Gilby Smith. And this is Kate's debut novel and introduces us to the character of Alex. On the day Alex was born, crowds surrounded the hospital. On her first day of school, people spied from the gates. And recently, strangers came to watch her perform in her school play. But Alex has always been wondering why, as she's a nobody. It's in her name. So when a mysterious boy named Jasper starts at her school, forms a fast friendship with Alex, and starts to unravel some of the answers to her questions, it all looks like it's going well, until Jasper disappears, into the year 2100. Will Alex follow Jasper into the future to find out what has happened to him, what happens to her, and why these time tourists have travelled this far back in time to meet her? I'm absolutely sure that my future self will be looking back at this preview, having loved reading this story, and I know your future selves will be too. Thanks Hachette for the finished copy. Also out on the 10th of June is Big Sky Mountain by Alex Milway. If you've read Alex's colourfully illustrated Hotel Flamingo series, then you'll know what a joy they are to read. And this first book of this brand new series set in the great outdoors looks like it's going to be much more of the same. In this one, Rosa Wilde has come from the city to live with Grandma Nan in the wilds of Big Sky Mountain. Big Sky Mountain is like nowhere Rosa has dreamed about before, with no houses or shops and just a wild-haired old lady for company. Here, Grandma Nan lives in an old wooden cabin with Albert the Moose and Little Pig the Pig Meow and spends every day out on adventures. So it seems that Rosa has a lot to learn as life never stays still for long on Big Sky Mountain. Can she be the mountain girl Grandma needs her to be and rise to the challenge, especially when unexpected visitors show up to the mountain and cause chaos? Big thanks Piccadilly Press for the finished copy. I've really loved reading Eva Josefkovich's books, like the Waterstones Children's Book Prize shortlisted The Mystery of the Colour Thief, Girl 38 and The Key to Finding Jack, as they're all so superbly written. And so I'm very excited to see The Cooking Club Detectives, which is her fourth children's novel coming out on the 10th of June. When Erin and her single parent mum, Lara, move into Skipton, it doesn't take long for Erin to set eyes on the town's community centre. Ramshackle, run down and in need of some rapid TLC, it soon becomes an integral part of Erin's life when she participates in the cooking club there with a friend from school, Tanya, who lives a very different lifestyle to that of Erin and her mum. As the building is suddenly threatened with closure, Erin and Tanya join forces with their friends at school to form the cooking club detectives. For one of these friends, Sam, the community centre is about much more than just cookery club, because for him, it's his life. His family, as well as many others, rely on it for breakfast club, childcare using its crash, sports clubs, social events, and food bank and more. With all of this at stake, can the children save Skipton House before it's too late? Eva is an author that more people need to be hearing about, not least for his stories that have heaps of heart and humanity at their core but because they are so relevant to the times that we live in today. Especially this one with it touching upon themes of food poverty and the importance of community. So big thanks Eva for sending me a finished copy. Abby Elphinstone is one of my favourite authors with her fantastical and magical stories that capture readers' imaginations so immersively. So I'm thrilled to see the next instalment in the Unmapped Chronicles series, The Crackle Dawn Dragon, out on the 10th of June which is volume three, after Rumble Star and Jungle Drop, and Everdark, its prequel too. And this one follows Zebedee Bolt, Abby always has the best character names, who is on the run, again. However, this time, he is found by an evil harpy that goes by the name of Morg. Now, if you've ever read any of the books in this series, you'll be very familiar with Morg. After finding him and hauling him into Crackledorn, an unmapped kingdom that conjures sunlight for our world, Zebedee realises he's in for more than he could have ever imagined, especially when he meets a girl and a talking chameleon who must help him to defeat Morg once and for all. Not only is this a story about saving the world with its environmental themes, but there is more magic, adventure and another whole new world just waiting to be discovered in this one. And for those reasons alone, count me in. Thanks Simon & Schuster for the finished copy. Escape the Rooms is the new debut children's book out on the 10th of June by celebrity actor, presenter and scriptwriter Stephen Mangan 
and brought to life through the signature and original illustrations of his talented artist sister, Anita Mangan. The story follows Jack and Callie, two children dealing with grief and loss, who must enter a series of mysterious rooms, solving problems and trials to find their way home. Based on the concept of escape rooms, which have become increasingly popular with young people, this adventure promises to be dazzling, darkly funny and crammed with laugh-out-loud moments and unforgettable characters. I'm really looking forward to reading this as I really like Stephen as a comedian and I'm very interested to see how his comedy translates through his writing into this book. Thanks Scholastic for the finished copy. Another one for the 10th of June is A Glass House of Stars by first generation Chinese Australian author Shirley Ma. In this one we meet Mei Jing who has moved and migrated to Australia arriving in the new land with her family to begin a new life. Everything is very scary and very different, including her ever-changing house, and she also finds it hard to understand the children at school, because she can't speak the local language. Mei Jing's life has been turned upside down compared to what she's used to. Exploring her house and its surroundings, she discovers an old glass house in the backyard, and it is here where she finds a whole new world. One where she finds the ghost of Big Uncle and a rather strange cat, and one where she can dream. Back in school, she is still being bullied, and when tragedy strikes, after things were starting to look up for her, can Mei Jing and her family ever feel like they are accepted in this new land? From what I've read so far, this book really has a special quality to it that makes it quite unique in its written style as it's told through the eyes of Mei Jing's, but you actually feel like the story is happening directly to you. It has so much heart and bursts with empathy. So thanks, Esborn, for the finished copy. I'm really looking forward to reading Hey You, out on the 10th of June, written by award-winning illustrator Dapo Adiola as if speaking to his younger self, and best known for the Waterstones Children's Book Prize winning Look Up and its follow-up Clean Up, and brought to life by 18 of the most exciting and talented black illustrators working today. This groundbreaking picture book is an inspirational exploration of growing up black, highlighting the experiences black children face growing up with systemic racism, as well as providing hope for the future to its stunning array of words, messages and artwork, which I think will make for a powerful, poignant and perceptive experience for all who read it. Enter the colourful world of Indigo Wild and the magical creatures who live at Jellybean Crescent in this first book in the wonderfully wild new series by Pippa Kernick, out on the 10th of June. Discovered in the unknown wilderness when she was just a baby, Indigo was adopted by world-famous explorers and now, home for her is a crazy and colourful house full of magical creatures that her parents have also taken in over the years. When one day the creature they take in is running rampage around the house, the race is on to catch the creature before it's too late. Thank you, Hatchet, for sending me a finished copy. And from seeing this, I can really imagine fans of the Amelia Fang series by Laura Ellen Anderson wanting to read this. Up next is Me and the Robersons by Siri Kolu out on the 10th of June. It is one of the most widely known children's novels from Finland. Translated from Finnish into 21 languages and now available in the UK for the first time thanks to the translation of Ruth Urban. This one tells the wildly madcap and stupendous story of Maisie who becomes kidnapped by the out of this world crazy family called the Robersons who are a bunch of bandits that have such a sweet tooth that they love to steal sweets. As Maisie joins them on the open road she soon realises that she's on quite the adventure with them when she becomes embroiled in their random ransacking and dangerous dealings. She even becomes one of the gang. But when she discovers that her parents and the police are looking for them, does Maisie want to be rescued by them? Or does she want to stay with her newfound family of friends? Big thanks Little Tiger for sending me a finished copy. And I've also produced chapter by chapter resources for this book if you're looking to use it in the classroom. So keep a lookout for those. Welcome to the House of Serendipity, where friendships are fashioned and destinies designed in Sequins and Secrets by Lucy Iverson, out on the 10th of June. This first book in this new series follows Myrtle and Sylvia, two girls from different worlds bonded together by their passion for fashion. Filled with 1920s period detail and fabulous fashion illustrations, this book will whisk you back to a time of glitz, glamour and stylish scandals that will have you searching for your flapper dresses, ball gowns, dancing slippers, feather boas and vintage clothing. This is Lucy's first series as a solo author and for younger readers and I'm looking forward to stepping back in history into this fashion house. Thanks Esborn for the finished copy. 
I read the most amazing children's book about three years ago called The Eye of the North by Sinead O'Hart and that book changed the way I read for many reasons, not least because it was the first ever primary school book club pick, winning our February 2018 vote, so I'm absolutely ecstatic to see the prequel Skyborn to The Eye of the North coming out on the 10th of June and it looks incredible. Set in a circus world that's seen better days, this one tells the story of Bastion who calls it home and will do anything to save it, including a death-defying act. However, when the act fails to draw in the crowd, the ringmaster makes a deal with a mysterious man called Dr. Bauer, and he wants something close to Bastion's heart. Sinead's storytelling is always so full of adventure, set in worlds that are so brilliantly built, with characters that live long in the memory, and I just know that this will be more of the same. Thanks, Little Tiger, for the finished copy, and big thanks to Sinead for the mention in your acknowledgements at the back of your beautiful book. Do you ever look at life as one big joke? Well, that's what 13-year-old Carmichael Taylor, Car for short, does in Something I Said by Ben Bailey Smith, out on the 10th of June. Living his life more like an accidental comedian, he can't understand why everyone else doesn't find life as laughable as him, and it sometimes gets him into trouble. Like when he's filmed performing a piece of hilarious stand-up at the school talent show, and it blows up, going viral, and making him internationally infamous. It's up to Carl whether or not to chase his comedy dream that he's always wanted. I'm only a couple of chapters into this big-hearted, brilliantly written book, and the laugh-out moments just keep on coming, so I can't wait to read more of this. Thanks, Bloomsbury, for sending me a finished copy. Lauren St. John is well known for writing very atmospheric stories such as The White Giraffe and Cat Wolf Investigates, which feature a vast array of animal characters and sometimes African life, using her experiences of growing up in Zimbabwe to create them. In Wave Riders, which comes out on the 10th of June, we travel to the British Virgin Islands, where she takes us on an exciting adventure set at sea about twins Jess and Jude, who live a dream life sailing from one exotic destination to the next, with their guardian Gabriel. But when Gabe vanishes, they're left guardianless, and when a storm arrives it wreaks chaos upon their lives, leaving them lost and alone. When the twins are offered a home by a wealthy family, the stately mansion they live in becomes one of secrets, and secrets that they find are close to home. Can the twins solve the mysteries that surround them, especially when they involve them? I'd like to say a big personal thanks to Lauren for sending me a signed copy of her gorgeous book. As we near the end of the month, look out on the 24th of June for A Dinosaur Ate My Sister by Pooja Puri and Alan Fatamaharan, the first book selected for the new Marcus Rashford Book Club in partnership with Macmillan Children's Books and children's food charity Magic Breakfast and will reach children in over 850 primary schools in England and Scotland. In this one we meet Asha Verma who is a genius inventor and who has just created a time machine to compete at the Brain Trophy competition, the ultimate inventing prize. But when Asha's big sister, who can't keep her hands to herself, hijacks the time machine the day before the competition, it sends her on a journey back to the Cretaceous Age where she meets the dinosaurs. Can Esha's scientific skills, along with her apprentice for company, save her sister and get her back in time? Told through the journalistic style of Esha, this looks brilliant for encouraging children to read a mix of science and history together, and I think it's going to be a big hit. Thanks Macmillan for the finished copy. <laughs> Lastly, out on the 24th of June, I'm also delighted to see the incredible talking machine from Jenny Spangler and Chris Mould, whose debut The Vanishing Trick was not only selected as Waterstone's Book of the Month for May 2020, but was also one of my favourite reads of last year. In this one, we can expect more gloriously gothic adventures with 12-year-old Tig, who works at Manchester's Theatre Royale, cleaning, selling tickets and doing anything else that is asked of her by a tyrannical boss, Mr Snell. Because Tig will do whatever it takes to get closer to her dream, to become a stage manager and spend her days inventing new ways to imagine and build the intricate machinery and props that bring the exciting productions to life. But when a strange new act, a talking machine, arrives at the theatre, it moves and behaves in a way that Tig just can't work out. It's as though it's alive somehow. And when the machine appears to be hiding a dangerous secret, Tig must race against time to solve the mystery before everything and everyone she cares about is lost forever. I can't wait to return to the wonderful writing of Jenny that is complemented so well by the illustrative genius that is Chris Mould who make the perfect partnership for this style of stories. So these are the books I'm most excited about reading this month. Let me know in the comments below which children's books you're looking forward to reading, 
particularly from those featured in this video or any others you've got your eye on. As always, keep reading and I'll see you in the next video.